Welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings, the card game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Grant Thompson, just along for the ride. And I'm Ted Bennett, and I love talking about cards! Yay! <laughs> Ted is ready. Ready Teddy, that's what they call me. <laughs> Who's they? Um, uh, you and... Uh, just for the record, right. I've never once <laughs> called you Ready Teddy. I don't think anybody <laughs> for himself has called him that. <laughs> no, I don't think I've ever been uh, never been called that ever. Uh, but uh, I bet you we have sixteen people that would love to call you Ready Teddy, though. <laughs> they, uh, you know what? The, that'll be the top. Um, we're we're gonna new a new Patreon tier. Uh, at our top level supporter, they have the rights to call me Ready Teddy, and I won't even get upset. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it guys join at patreon.com i'm actually going to put that in as a new level <laughs> um that'll be the 20 dollar level so right now there's a there's a one five ten dollar level there will there will be a 20 dollar ready teddy level so um feel free anybody who who commits uh for 20 bucks just one time just can be one time gets to call <laughs> ted ready teddy for the rest of yep, the, it'll be a title uh, we bestow upon you <laughs> right it's like a sword thing but um we do have 16 patrons that have been dedicated to helping us create our show for a long time and we want to take a time take a moment to thank all of them and i try to thank all of them personally um and so we have daniel david jason joseph justin kyle matt mike dominic phil rob robert robert russ and sean now i did skip over one of the patrons because this is a patron that ready teddy and i met um last year at con of the rings and became a patron almost right after con of the rings and we actually played against him in the two-player um the two-player tournament uh, so the tournament right the the not two-player tournament the the competitive tournament and so ted and i played against him and um uh his his companion. partner there yeah i could see his face <laughs> and his name just went right out of my head matt i guess is his name um or yeah i think anyways uh sorry um uh and so i skipped over lewis lou Igo, who is um has been our patron for a while and the reason why i mentioned him last is number one he's an amazing guy lou thank you so much for all your all your uh support for to the show but he this is the show that he has been waiting for he has been dying so if you want to uh have us um if you want to recommend show ideas to us feel free to always send out where we'll 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 think about and do just about anything um that we haven't done already so it's good stuff yeah and we uh re we uh, revisit cards too from time to time especially if we've done a spoiler episode on them and not a card that we've done after release so feel free to uh, send us an email hit us up on facebook um comments on uh, our videos below and we'll be happy to uh, take your suggestions for content you want to see or cards you want us to visit yeah, and so, um, because of that, Grant, what card are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going back to the Corset Stables. Corset Stables? To... Yep. We've done we a are... lot of those. We are going for the Elven Princeling Legolas. Um, he is 9 cost, 1 willpower, 3 attack, 1 defense, 4 hit points, he has the noble Sylvan Warrior traits. He has got the keyword ranged. And with the response, after Legolas participates in an attack that destroys an enemy, place two progress tokens on the current quest. Yeah, that's good. So, great. Core set Legolas, the first rules in, uh, in, in big. In, Ambiguity and ambiguity. Thank you. Right, that caused me to uh, look up how to understand this uh, damn game. 
Well, what what was that? Ted, talk about that ambiguity right now. <laughs> oh, sure. Um, when the game first came out, I mean, there's still lots of rules questions today, but when the game came out, there there, there were plenty. And, and uh, the first of which came up was like Liss's ability. Uh, his ability reads, you know, after he uh, destroys a, a, a an enemy with an attack, he puts two progress on the current quest. But what was kind of misunderstood about that is that the location uh, acts as a buffer always between um, putting progress on, on the quest. Stuff, progress goes on the active location first. And it's kind of bizarre because, like, the wording specifically says put on the quest but his progress actually goes on to the active location uh is how it's been ruled because you know progress flows just like when you quest progress flows from the active location first to the main quest scenario and that came out in the faq 1.1 yeah 2011 (laughs) and I there you know what there's still something I'm unsure about and maybe it is answered in that rules FAQ. Um, I don't know what happens to his ability. Let's say you have uh, active location, you kill an enemy with Legolas, and the quest only needs one more progress to be complete. So this he put one on the quest and then the one goes to or excuse me one on the quest and, and one on the active location because all it needs to be taken. Or is the one wasted? Um, I believe it goes um, with it saying two progress on the current quest. I believe it goes one on the location and then one on the quest card, if that's how it goes. Yeah. I should uh, reread the uh, FAQ on it to see if it. Spe- that's how I've actually always played it. If well, the location just, only uh, needs I've one more. The, I've got the FAQ um, notes up here on Hall of the Own. If you have an active location, Progress tokens are placed there instead of the current quest card. This benefit occurs anytime Legolas is part of an attack that destroys an enemy, whether he attacks alone or with somebody else. Right. And I think that, that it always spills over to the quest card if you. Yeah. Um, yeah. However, I, I believe they would be wasted if the quest card would flip after one progress was placed on the quest card. Correct. Yep, because you don't also place quest, for the you don't place you don't place quest uh, or progress tokens individually, so you place them as a group. So yeah. Okay, so so I'm are gonna... we ready to ring this? Guy? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, uh, let's talk about what else he does. Uh, yeah. But yeah, let's talk about his ability, and we'll talk about his traits and his keywords and everything. So who's going so, first? Grant. Grant's going to go first. Grant's going first. He loves Grant, Legolas. Letter. I don't know if he loves Letter. Legolas, but get right up well, in that mic, Grant, and tell us what you think. Well, as of um, recently, since i done the um, Attack on Dol Guldur epic multiplayer, I have found a newfound liking for Legolas. He has definitely shown me his worth in the recent parts of the game's life. Yes, he was brilliant back when it first came out, but then I found he quickly went into my binder for other types of decks that I was playing. But for the past few months, he's been making into a few more decks. Um, his ability to um, help take down locations is very nice. He's able to participate in multiple attacks um, through... Um, He's ranged keyword and yeah, he him with a um, Rivendell blade or a blow of the Galadrum or um, even a Rohan warhorse war and a war axe and he's quite deadly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree with with Grant on a lot of that. Um, a lot of what you said, you know, a couple of those attachments on him make him really good. Um, the Blade of Gondolin from the very from the very uh, beginning of the core set is like his his jam. You know, that's that's what you do. But the 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 hard part with playing Legolas is he doesn't quest, but he can take if if you're thinking about building a deck from the beginning um, when you have a limited card pool. 
Legolas can take care of the attacking, but he can't do much else really well. I guess he could take a defense if he needed to with, with one defense and four hit points. That's enough to kind of take a defense. Um, but he's not really questing, and you want to keep him around to be able to attack. So, um, and his ability to kill things is pseudo-questing, which people, I think, appreciate with him, but I think that you, at least my trajectory with Legolas is that, like, at the beginning, I was all about Legolas and what he was doing, and I was attaching stuff and making him attack for six or seven, you know, out of the beginning. And then during the middle of the game, or the, you know, when I was expanding my card pool and I was trying other things, like, I feel like Legolas didn't have enough oomph to really put it in a deck because I play solo mainly. And so if I'm playing solo, I need to be able to do everything. And Legolas is good at one thing, but he's not good at much else. And that, and that, what do I want to say? That kind of hampers me from wanting to put him in the, into a deck. Um, but now I've kind of come around and said, okay, there's so many good allies that can do, can help out that Legolas may come back into play. But as always, whenever we have a card that has so many different versions of him, like, I think that ally Legolas works his way into way more decks than than um than hero legolas um and then spirit legolas the hero spirit legolas i think is its own it's his own deck archetype and really doesn't see his way into a lot of other decks other than that kind of just that gimli gimli legolas 300 sort of thing that goes on that we talked about back in um couples february but you know so i think that i think that the ally version of Tactics Legolas slightly overshadows the the hero version. So that's yep. that's um, my long-winded explanation <laughs> going I on there. I agree with what you're saying there, David. Um, ally Legolas does sort of overshadow hero Legolas for the card draw and tactics. Unfortunately, with Messenger of the King, too, <laughs> you can... <laughs> right. now, now play ally Legolas as a hero... <laughs> Right for um, less for less threat but, cost, right? For one less threat cost. One less threat get, cost, and because, you get the ability to draw a card in place right. of the exploration, which right. both have their benefits. Right, because yeah. that's something in tactics, like Grant was saying. That's something in tactics that you don't see very often. You don't see placing random progress, nor do you see card draw in the tactics sphere much. So that's usually why you have to add uh, lore or uh, I'm sorry, spirit or uh, you know, card draw and lore or whatever. You know, like, you just have to try to... I don't know. So, this is... Not, let me just say this, Lewis. This is not exactly, I'm sure, what you wanted to hear about uh, <laughs> Tactics Legolas the Hero, but... I'm you know, other uh, cards are. <laughs> but, anyways, Teddy, you, you've been kind of quiet on uh, this. What uh, What's your... Yeah, so, core set, Tactics Legolas is a phenomenal hero. I, he was great when he came out, and he still holds true to the end of the card pool, as we're seeing. He, he loses a little bit of... Um, of steam when you play him in true solo a little bit just because his ranged keyword um, is not as effective. Um, but as soon as you're playing two or more players, he his value continues to skyrocket. His pseudo questing has saved, um, you know, it's there's I think it's kind of an underestimated ability because um, he is in a way he, he's he's providing that attack strength of three. And in a way, he's also providing two willpower, as if you'd had another character that had quested for two. Um, it doesn't quite work like that, but it's again, it's kind of a, a more subtle way to make progress on the quest. And there are a couple times, depending on the scenario, where there are locations that when they're active, they have bad effects. Um, you know, they prevent you from doing something either that turn or the next turn. Like you you can't reduce your threat when this location is active or you can only play one card per phase or per turn when this location is active and Legolas will clear that location at the end of a turn instead of, you know, the halfway through the next turn after you quest. 
And there's quite a bit of value on that. And you stack a bladed gondola and an A-Rod on him, and now all of a sudden he's, you know, putting four progress on a location. Like, that's going to explore a big chunk of locations in the game. Yeah, I think that it's important to talk about um, some of these attachments that, that are going with. Yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. like, <laughs> because I think that he's a fine hero out of the box. One of the things that um, I think that uh, Mr. Underhill, Ryan Kelly, uh, worked was talking about uh, on our show that we did with him a year and a half ago, two years ago, whatever it was, is that, like, the ability on the hero is what, I am looking at. And so that ability on hero like loss is, is, is fine. It's great. You know, put the two progress, but it's contingent on having enemies. And sometimes, you know, even in the early corset, you know, shadows of Mirkwood cycle days, you know, you play the Hills of M and Muil, you may not ever get an enemy. You play, um, you play the hunt for Gollum. You don't get very many, enemies out you know like so it's contingent on being able to uh, kill an enemy to put those two on there mm-hmm. so that so it's not something that you can get all the time and i'm not that's not a knock on the card but that's just something that i feel like it needs to be it's pointed out like there's times when you want to put that progress on the location you just can't because there's nothing to be able to do and Again, playing solo, losing that ranged ability to actually participate in attacks where you can put the two progress is um, is tragic. <laughs> if you want to see Legolas utilized to pretty much full potential, go check out um, Mr. Hunderhill's live stream of Attack on Dol Guldua from a few weeks ago. You will see Legolas just dominating combat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His um his ability that uh, we're talking about, uh, Grant, you mentioned the Rohan Warhorse. The nice yeah. thing is about Legolas's abilities, it's not limited once per phase. Yeah. So if you give him any type of action advantage through Unexpected Courage, Rohan Warhorse, uh, they synergize so very well with his ability because now if he's getting two kills, you know, he's putting four progress on the quest or location. And that's yeah, um, that's not nothing. That's a lot. That is. <laughs> yeah, right. especially when he attack, especially when he can kill things on his own. So you've got say a blade of gondolin on him. You've got the Rohan Warhorse, and you've got the War Axe. There's three attachments. He gets to ready twice, and he's attacking for seven, six, seven. Yeah. Orcs. You're talking yeah. about a gold, a three hunters or golden belt scenario, yeah. right? Where he can have three attachments. Golden belt scenario. Just pointing that out. <laughs> yeah, and then if you add on the three hunters and get that fourth attachment, you can then just put him up to something like eleven attack, and he's pretty much just wiping the board with any enemy that's coming out. Well, you the- can you can boost up his attack pretty pretty well without doing the three hunters yeah. or i mean you can you can give him the, you could give him the one ring and give him strength and courage so that's he's up to well. attack now he's up to seven attack and then you can give him you know the a, a blade of gondolin or the war axe you know and, and then you can you can give him a rod you know the, i mean there's a lot of ways to to make his attack even the dunedin mocks right without even using um the golden belt so unrestricted for the one ring so yeah um you don't have to um use up all these restricted attachments to boost his attack i was just using them as an example sure 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 and once he gets online and he's dominating like every enemy that's coming out if you've got an enemy heavy quest you can quite easily blow through locations that um would normally take you maybe one or two rounds to get through if it's got six quest points, if it's got four quest points. Um, and if you've got, as Ted said, if you've got the ready and you just blow out those locations one turn and then you're on to the next one. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that this guy is, is pretty good once... What's, what's the... What's the... 
I don't know, threshold for making him an, an awesome attacker that you don't have to worry about stuff. Like, um, if he gets up to seven, are you good? If he gets up to six, is he good? Like, um, six or seven, and you're sitting fairly nicely um, with just with the ability because generally most enemies have between five and seven to um, like completely wipe them out. Some quests need a bit more if you're going up against like hill trolls or cave, greater cave trolls or like the Nazgul, they take a bit more. But generally, about six, seven. Um, in the threshold for like Haldia, um, once Haldia can like snipe an enemy for seven, he's quite good. Legolas is basically the same. Yeah. Yeah, his um. Well, let's let's talk about his traits. I think his his traits are a strength. The fact that he's he's Sylvan, the right. the Sylvan and Noldor characters have access to fairly good weapons that we've named. Um, there's some generic ones like Dagger of Western Ease, Blade of Gondolin that work with any hero, but Rivendell Blade, um, the uh, Bow of the Galathrum especially that gives him plus two if he's not engaged with the enemy. Uh, he can also have a Rivendell Bow which because he has the printed ranged keyword gives him plus one attack and that's not not a restricted item. And then, you know, then you're playing tactics, then you're playing weapons. Uh, and then you can play things like foe, foe hammer, you know, like those all start to fit into the deck and you're getting a lot of synergy. Like you're killing the enemy, then you're going to play foe hammer. Then you're going to put two progress. Um, and it, it, it flows very nicely. It's, it's, it's very strong. And, even him just being a, a, a ranged hero, there's not that many ranged heroes in the game. You know? In the tactics sphere, there's what, like, two or three? <laughs> there's like three? Him, Bard, Brand? Here, I'll, I'll let you know right here, but I was also going to say he's the only um, he's the only uh, tactics Sylvan that you have without using other things mm -hmm. messenger of the king and things like that so yeah um his sylvan traits lets him uh if someone else is running a, a sylvan deck you know um and they're playing sylvan trackers he gets free healing so you can dump archery damage on him because he's got four hit points he can soak one or two archery and then uh and heal it i have i have blocked with him in really, really dire situations. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, I don't think Chad from Cardboard of the Rings is is uh, rolling his eyes at me because I because uh, of uh, defending yeah. with Haldir is something you don't do. But I'm going to put together a Haldir defends everything deck pretty well, soon. So just for it, Chad, it ha oh, it happens, especially in the early game. You know, right. um, uh, and when there's quest card effects that like your defender maybe gets exhausted from something that you didn't expect them to get exhausted from. And you're like, well, I'll defend with like, this is one and he'll survive this attack. That's three, you know, he'll take two damage and live. Right. And, uh, and that way you play it safe instead of taking it undefended, you know, getting a, a risky shadow card. There are four ranged tactics heroes. Grant was beat me to it, so I said I was looking it up. So what were the what did you say, Ted? Uh, well, it's Bard, uh, right. Bard, and then Brand and Legolas, and the the fourth one escapes me off the top of my head. Well, that's because um, it's, it's not out yet. Well, it's why here from the land of sorrow. Ah, uh, see, spoiled. Yeah, and even in the whole look look at look outside of tactics, you have what Haldir Argalad in lore, um. You have Lore Faramir and Leadership Faramir and Landwind and Spirit. Oh my god. Okay, keep going. And uh, You're missing a leadership one that's uh it's from the Stewards Fear. Oh hair uh Harloween. Harloween, yep. <laughs> yeah. So yeah there, I mean, that's it. How what is ten? Uh twelve. Yeah. You know, and some of those are duplicates. Like then there's the right. other version of Legolas, and right. there's there's two versions of Faramir. Um, so, I was thinking about some some multiplayer decks just the other day, and I'm like, yeah, there's not a great selection. And but the fact that Haldir exists too, 
uh, they pair so well together because they share weapons. So, you know, when you put two, two Sylvan or Noldors in a deck together, they get to share Rivendell blades and share bows. And that's it. You can just put these wonderful weapons and not worry about like, Oh, I drew four weapons and I hell, you know, like this only has two restricted slots. Like, no, just play more, play a bunch of elves, let them tear it up. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get the you're gonna get the bleep there for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, Extra yeah. editing involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. Um, getting back to Legolas himself, um, I think he's definitely better than, or in my opinion, he's better than his spirit version for what he does. He's equal to or on par with his ally version. Yeah, I think that his ally is a little bit better than him uh, because the card draw is, I think, a little bit nicer than the two progress in yeah, most stupid, cases. But it's stupid messenger of the king too is the problem because it's like oh no, I can just be here, which I haven't done yet. Um, so I'm gonna do that and see how it compares. And yeah, that's the the problem with his ally, or the great thing about his allies, because card draws it's kind of scarce in tactics. Yeah. And he provides a, cons a more consistent way to do it, again, depending on if you have enemies. But the, the other thing that I like about this version of Legolas, the tactics hero, is that he doesn't have to go into a certain build. No, you know, no. like he's, I mean, yeah, he's Sylvan, so you can put him in a Sylvan build. But like his ability, you know, he's noble, so that gives you access to some some noble attachments. He's a warrior, which is is nice. That gives you some other some other options in terms of attachments. Um, but like that ability is a general use ability, so he can be he can be your you know Splat. splash tactics hero if you need something to help kill stuff you know like if you need because he's only nine threat and that's and that's pretty pretty good in my book so you know like i i like him he's like general general use general purpose in that case so like that that makes him a little bit better but i think that i think i stick to that whole like he's good early on in the early card pool and then you kind of move away from him and then you just kind of come back to him a little bit here and there. But you never yeah, forget I, about him. But you always kind of... I think it also comes down to how much of the card pool you have access to as well. Um, as you say, Legolas shines right at the beginning of the card pool. And then as your card pool expands, if you do it the way um, it came out, so you go into the Dwarred Elf, then you go into the Airs, and so on and so forth, he kind of loses his hype and his ability to just kill things up until you get to um, later on. And then you get a surplus of stuff that you can do with Legolas again. And then he sort of teeters on the edge of, well, do I use Legolas? Do I use Haldia? Do I do this? And as you say, David, he's always there. You never forget about him, but you're not always reaching for them. Right. I, I'll wrap this up um, here just by, well, I was going to say something and then I forgot what I was going we, to guys? say. So, hmm. I don't know. Should we ring this guy then? Let's do it. Put him through the ringer. Put him through the ringer. Okay. I'll so, one thing to say. Sure. I am Magali Vet Bellin Roof, uh, yeah, has done a beautiful bit of artwork for like last on this card. Yeah, that's true. Um, I remember opening the core set, you know, and like looking through the cards and the tokens and being like, "Wow!" And then one of the cards that he like that immediately caught my attention and how great the artwork is was was Lightless out of the core set, you know, because it was such a departure from, uh, you know, like the movies. You know, because people were like the blonde this is more true to um, the literature, right? That's that's the thing, right? Like the 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 dark hair and gray eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, 
Okay, well, let's ring this guy. For anybody who is new to the show or uh, has forgotten, we have a highly scientific yet arbitrary scale where we rank this, rank each card on a scale from 1 to 10, where 1 is the one card to rule them all, and 10 is the card that we throw back into the fiery chasm from whence it was made. So, um, I guess we've done this for almost every card that we have, and Ted, we're going to let you go first, buddy. Oh, I put him to the ringer. Um, I'm going to give him a tray. Wow. Okay. To, to a tray so he can hop on the tray and then slide down <laughs> the stairs <laughs> and shoot orcs like a bad, cool guy. Uh, I'm going to give him a three because right. he's a tactics uh, hero. Tactics heroes attack things and he gets a bonus for attacking things and he's ranged so he makes it easier to attack things and his traits are wonderful to support him attacking things attacking things i saw that coming from a mile away <laughs> i think everybody did yeah i'm gonna give him i'm gonna give him a three okay and even then he's close to a two <laughs> wow okay lou i hope you're hearing this buddy yeah okay grant what do you think I'm also going to give him a three. He's excellent at what he does. As I say, I found a newfound respect for Hero Legolas over the past few, well, past month or so. And um, although I'm not reaching for him for every deck, um, Hero version, I am definitely considering him more in more in certain deck types and deck builds. So I'm also going to give him a three. Uh, well, being the guy that plays solo a lot. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to reel it in a little bit. I'm gonna have to give this guy a five. I enjoyed him early on in the card pool. Like I said, I think that he he has a great place, but I feel like he lost his luster for me um, for a lot of this. I play a lot of his ally version, um, even though his ally version is ranged, um, just for that card draw that is phenomenal. So um, I'm gonna have to give this guy a five. So Lou. Sorry, buddy. I just had to be honest. So I think when I think as a just as an aside, I think when Lewis told us, we we sent out like a questionnaire, and he said, um, "Do a show on tactics Legolas, um, explaining um, about the hero, and you know, explain why he's the best. You know, something like that. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> something something silly." So I guess Lou really likes this guy. So, um, so anyways, there you have it. I, I'm a little harder, I guess, on tactics like less than the guys are, but um, that's it. That's another that's show. just because you don't know better. <laughs> I don't know any better. So, okay, everybody, Lewis, thanks for the show idea, and we'll see you later, and have a good day. And if you're interested in finding this or any of our back episodes of Card Talk, feel free to search YouTube where you can find our flagship video episodes with the username Card Talk 2018. Or you can search the RSS feed, cardtalk2018.libsyn.org, for our extended audio versions of our podcast. Or you can find us on Facebook at Card Talk 2018. And if you have any questions for Grant or myself or for both of us, feel free to email us at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.